to see you all here. We're really excited uh, to have you join us for our second speaker. Hey, everyone. Hi, Zach. <laughs> great to see you again. Also, yeah, hi, Adam. It's great to see you. Oh, too. no. <laughs> um, yes, thanks for joining us for our second speaker event. And uh, we're very excited today to have three guest speakers join us. Uh, we have Haya, Spring, and Chris who are joining us to talk about the NYC Stutters Conference. Uh, so really excited to hear about um, the conference and hear about your experiences as well. Um, so thanks for joining us, you guys. So I think, you know, I think a good place to start here would be, um, right, if each of you uh, can kind of give an introduction about yourself and um, kind of tell us about yourself and your experiences with stuttering. Um, so if you don't mind, you know, giving a brief, uh, giving a brief overview of yourself. Uh, Adam, uh, uh, I'm Adam. Uh, I'm from I'm from New York, and um, it, it's awesome over here. I I'm a home now. I'm a home now, and and uh, and it's and it's great to be here, and it's great to see all of you here, and this will be a great thing. Inspiration all around, Katie, and all you guys are inspiration. We're gonna have a good meeting, and hoping to have some good turnout. Great to great to be. Great to see you again. I saw you two months ago, Zach Bondi. Yeah. Uh, yeah thanks. Uh, thanks, Adam. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, Chris, Haya, and Spring, if you guys would like to, I'll give an introduction about yourself. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Zach. Um, and thanks, Katie, for 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 inviting us as well. Um, uh, I was just jumping in, but but Spring or Haya, do you want to jump in before me or? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so yeah. Um, and uh, I guess a little bit of Zoom kind of housekeeping on, on my end as well. Um, uh, if uh, I'm speaking on Bluetooth um, headphones, and so if I'm not coming in clear or what have you, just kind of flag me down or something, and I'll I'll try to stop and um, and figure out what's going on if if um, if there are any problems with with me coming in clear. Um, and uh, and you might notice I have I have a pink background. I'm uh, I'm visiting family right now, and, and my niece uh, my niece likes pink walls apparently. Um, so that's so that's where that's where I am. This is way it is. So um, so let's see. So so this, so this is great to, uh, to 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 be taking part in this event today. Um, uh, you know, just um, you know. It, as Haya and Spring will kind of, will I'm sure kind of share as well. This is, um, it's nice to kind of relive uh, some of the work that, that 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 we in New York um, kind of have done um, in the past and what we're and what's kind of continuing to percolate uh, for our group um, currently. So, um, so with that, um, a, a, a background. Um, excuse me, about myself um, as a person who stutters. Um, so I, uh, um, I started stuttering as many people um, around the age of four and, um, and kind of throughout the years, um, I learned um, that, that for me to kind of get through um, school and, and to be as um, what I kind of learned was like the most successful plan for me was to try and learn techniques um, to, to be uh, covert and to uh, keep my stuttering kind of under wraps as much as, uh, as, much as I could. Um, and um, kind of different things uh, were my dad who, um, who, who I think who, who meant, oh, I know he meant well, uh, he tried to, uh, he tried when I was younger doing hooked on phonics with me um, to like uh, to try and sound out sound out the words and kind of speak more slowly and things like that and kind of like lessons uh, lessons and reinforcement like that over the years kind of um, my main takeaway was you know what I need to do is try to keep my stuttering under wraps and it wasn't till um, uh, until I had, um, I had finished school and had moved to New York um, when I met several 
um, I kind of became in touch with the, the, the New York City um, NSA uh, community that I started to kind of um, explore what what being out as a person who stutters and what being kind of what what being known as a person who stutters would feel like and um, and uh, you know that's and so I've been kind of for several years now maybe uh, maybe close to seven years uh, I would say I've been out as a person who stutters in the world and um, and it's not without challenges but uh, but that's but it's been um, it's been kind of a life changing choice and and um, and some of the people that I've met within the stuttering community, um, especially in New York and including uh, Spring and Haya uh, are just some great, uh, just some of the greatest people and some of the kind of greatest sort of influences, um, you know, that, that have really kind of helped me kind of, kind of, uh, kind of redirect kind of the, the direction of my life in a positive way. Awesome. Yeah. So thanks for uh, sharing that, Chris. And, um, you know, uh, hearing your story, it's, um, you know, it, it was, it's very similar to mine um, personally, you know, um, you know, something I told you this week, I was, I was also, you know, very covert um, for a long time. So, you know, having someone like you who's, who's had, you know, it, it, it sounds like, uh, you know, uh, having you know, similar experiences to me is, um, you know, it's been good for me to be able to see other people in the community who've, you know, kind of had a, you know, the same path as I, as me, um, you know, so kind of, you know, have someone to look up to. So, and like I said, I've, um, you know, I've, I listened to your podcast on Sutter Talk and everything. So, you know, so thanks for, uh, thanks for being a role model for the stuttering community. Um, you know, I appreciate it. And I'm sure there's a lot of other people who do as well. Um, Spring or Haya, if you could, if one of you would like to go next, uh, feel free. <laughs> So, um, so hi everyone, my name is Spring. Um, I am very, very grateful to be a part of this. I thank you um, for hosting the, the, this. Um, I, so a bit about me, I am um, a first generation Chinese American. I grew up in Houston, Texas. Um, so I feel like I grew up um, with your pretty true traditional ma ma minority story. Um, and I think that my background really has influenced the way I feel about my stutters. Similar to most people here, I'm sure, I grew up very covert. Um, I, I, rem I, I rem remember just like the Density of it, especially when growing up. Um, just like the feeling of being able to pass as fluent, but feeling incredibly fraudulent, but also actually stuttering and just feeling very guilty. Um, so I have been pretty covert my whole life. Um, I moved to New York for school and I've been here ever since. And I was, and I've been involved um, in the NEEC. New York chapters um, for as long as this, I think. Um, so about like six or seven years at this point. Um, for me and my own um, stuttering experience, I have found it most therapeutic being able to validate um, all of my past experiences and all of these thoughts. Um, you know, we feel like this for a reason. And I have really spent a lot of time really dissecting everything I've internalized about my, my, my own speech. Um, and the other thing that I've been really um, passionate about is the way um, my stuttering identity intersects with everything else. Um, the way it, it intersects with race, with gender, with sexuality, with everything. Um, I, we don't stutter in a vacuum. Um, so I have also been really, really interested in that. And that's also been a very it, it, important part of my own stuttering experience. Um, 
now I uh, 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 I think about stuttering all the time, but I think now I think about it in a really different way. Um, I, 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 I do experience a lot of pride in it, but I still definitely experience shame. Um, I, um, oh, and for my profession, I work in fashion, um, but so I, I, I have the perspective of, um, of ha having a stutter and working in a pretty corporate job. And I also feel like that really influences the way I feel about my speech. Um, and uh, 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 I always um, talk about just the way um, that it influences everything. Um, like if I could really track it, I could really connect everything with my speech. Um, and I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think for a lot of us, stuttering is really just in everything. I think it's really shaped us and it's really molded us into the people we are. And I don't think that that's a bad thing at all. Um, so I guess that's just a bit about me and my own stuttering experiences and just the way I think about my own speech and the way I, I, I approach thinking about stuttering as a about the community. Great, yeah, so thanks for sharing that spring. Um, that was really great to hear. And um, you know, I think it's, I think it's great, you know, sharing your experiences on your journey with stuttering. And, you know, now you're at the point where, right, you're leading events like the NYC Stutters Conference. So um, you know, that's, that's great to see. And I'm glad you touched on the point too of how, you know, stuttering can really, uh, can really impact, you know, um, so many different areas of our life, not just the, the speech itself and, you know, how that's, you know, that's a good thing sometimes too. It's, you know, um, you know, how it can, it can be a positive impact in a lot of areas of our life. So thanks for sharing that. And uh, thanks again for joining us. I know it was a short notice that we asked you to join. So uh, we're really great that you are really glad that you were able to join us here tonight. So thanks again. Um, so Haya, if you would like to um, tell us a little, a little about yourself, but feel free. <laughs> thank you, Zach. First off, um, thank you, Zach. And thank you, KK84 creating this um, conversation. And um, it's really been great to be part of it. Um, and also to everyone really that's involved with Shared Voices, Chicago. So my experience with stuttering is multi-layered, um, similar to Chris and Spring, same feelings growing up, wanting to be covert and doing everything in my power. For me, it was silence and, you know, and taking on a persona that wasn't truly, myself. Um, so that was my experience growing up. Um, my experience growing up also was that I went to speech therapy and um, I was cured. Um, and, uh, and so therefore I was dismissed from therapy in second grade um, and then had little stints of going back because I, I let my mom know actually I'm having a hard time talking. But that's all to say that um, it, it fueled the fire with, within me to say whatever therapy that is out there and this was actually by some specialists to say something is missing, a huge big piece is missing. And so that takes me to where I am today. I am a speech therapist and I specialize in st uh, 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 uttering. I work at the uh, American Institute for Stuttering and um, um, very much enjoy uh, doing my very best to su support people who stutter um, wherever they're at. So. Um, and then to sort of sort of give you a bit of um, an understanding of how I got involved with the stuttering community. So it was during college, it was actually during my graduate course where I realized um, how much shame I still carried about stuttering. And it was upon the recommendation of my professor, Dr. Ryan Pollard, who many of you might know that I went to an NSA group fell in love and I was like, wow, this, this feels like home, which is the power of such groups and such conversations. And uh, ever since then, it was like, just keep going and kept going back. Um, so now I'm one of the chapter leaders of the, and, uh, the New York City um, 
uh, chapter, and um, I'm thinking of NYC Stutters, uh, which I'm obviously involved with too. And um, it's it's just been an incredible journey. And so I really shifted from shame and traveled the journey to pride. I'm very very open about the fact that I stutter, and this is coming from someone who would rather like have the ground swallow you up whole than let somebody know even that I might stutter. Um, and so now I I like to talk about stuttering at every chance I get and um, if and when it happens to go with it to let it rip if that's what I'm in the mood of um, and as a therapist there's such an interesting uh, interplay of you know learning to stutter less capping it versus just owning it fully and, and wearing it with pride so uh, that's something that maybe we could touch on too so a little little bit of, of my story awesome yeah thanks Aya for sharing that and um yeah, it's, it's great to see, you know, just how involved we are with the stuttering community. And, um, you know, like I was telling you earlier this week, you know, you're being a host on, on Stutter Talk, you know, and really, not really putting yourself out there and, and really, you know, um, you know, being a role model to, uh, to a lot of people in the stuttering community. I know, you know, uh, for me, that was, that was such a big part of, of my journey was, you know, going online and, and listening to these podcasts or to these articles, um, you know, so just hearing you you know, host these, host these interviews and, you know, just really um, be a leader in the studying community is, has really been great for me. And, um, you know, I'm sure it's helped a lot of other people as well. So, you know, thanks again for, uh, for everything you're doing and uh, for the community. Um, so thanks everyone for uh, uh, introducing yourself. Um, you know, with that now, I think maybe we can, we can talk, we can talk a little bit about the, uh, the NYC Stutters um, conference or the community. Um, so maybe, um, can you tell us, you know, kind of, um, kind of your reason, you know, for starting, uh, for starting this organization, um, you know, kind of the process for starting it, right? So, um, you know, like, what were the steps to start it? There's, you know, probably a lot of like, community building or relationship building, um, or, you know, any challenges you face along the way for starting it. So if you can kind of just give, you know, a sort of an overview uh, for starting uh, the NYC Stutters organization. Uh, so I can just start off, but Kai and Chris, feel free to jump in. Um, I think for starters, the community in New York City is very, very rich. Um, we have a lot of people and we have a lot of really passionate people about this. And I think for us, um, just as people who stutter, I think there's that whole disability burden where the only way people actually learn more about your stutter is if you share and, and if you constantly educate. Um, and I think with their support groups, um, we love that part. We love inviting um, speech language pathologists in and we love um, being able to really bridge that connection. Um, but for us, we really were thinking of a space free from, from all of that. We were thinking of a space um, for people who stutter by only people who stutter. And we saw it as kind of the step be, be beyond the support groups. Um, like we, we have our support groups and we have this great network, um, but what can we do to really um, deepen the community and to create the space where we can not only empower each other, but really like explore everything with our stuttering identities um, to create the space for us to really think about like how we want to be perceived, um, things that are important to us without feeling the burden of um, educating people, but just a space um, for us to be able to just look at our speech and to be able to just um, be be quite experimental in it if we need to and just feel um, feel whatever we have to and talk about whatever we need to and then from there um, from there we we really thought that that um, was a very important part of our community um, 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm whispering on all that. Um, and I guess I'll kind of, I'll kind of, um, I'll kind of speak on it for, 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 from my, from my perspective. Um, you know, NYC stutters um, conferences uh, kind of came like it was. Um, it was like it was very. It was like a very kind of grassroots sort of thing uh, where, you know, like Haya said before. I mean, I I just I I started going to NSA uh, support group monthly meetings in New York and in Brooklyn, um, and uh, it just really it really resonated with me. Um, it really kind of it sort of immediately changed my life. Um, not not like, not like it like improved my life immediately, but like, uh, I just remember when I first kind of stumbled into um, support group meeting, and and like you and like you Zach, I, I kind of before I ever made my, my my way to a support group, I I kind of dabbled with the stuttering community on podcasts like Stutter Talk and things like that. Um, and so like I kind of had like my toe in the water and then diving in with um, NSA groups, uh, it was like, I remember my first meeting and I just, and it was maybe a meeting of like 10 other people who stutter in Brooklyn. And um, I don't remember anything I said, if I even said anything. Uh, I just remember like walking away and being like exhausted, um, but also like, just something inside me knew that that I that I needed to get a little bit more of that, whatever that was in that room, um, and you know, seven years later, I I haven't turned away from it, um, you know. But it was just uh, over time, you know, going back um, back to the back to the meetings monthly, you know, kind of having conversations with um, with the regulars that that went to the meetings, kind of. Uh, we would we would talk about um, similar topics from 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 meeting to meeting, um, and you know it became kind of clear that you know there were certain categories that we that we wanted to to talk about you know that we always wanted to talk about, um, and you know with um, you know kind of broad as career stuff and interviewing and things like that and you know, as, as specific as, you know, the, 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 the dread you feel when the phone rings, when you're sitting in your office or somewhere and you know, you have to answer the phone. Um, but just, but just kind of topics that were very common. And, um, and I, I think kind of over time, um, a group of us felt very motivated to kind of structure uh, these conversations that were kind of happening very organically at the meetings, um, we, we 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 wanted to kind of organize ourselves and kind of put our brains together to kind of um, develop a format to discuss uh, discuss these topics kind of more intensely, um, and that was kind of how we um, came upon the idea to put together. Um, one day conferences with New York City Sunders. So I'll, I'll jump in here um, to add on to what Chris and Springer are saying. Um, they're in, in the rooms. We have such a diverse group of amazing human beings that come to the New York City groups. And this is including um, Brooklyn, New York, um, Manhattan, and I, I believe now the Bronx, but at that point, the Bronx wasn't yet functioning. So we get people really coming in from all over and there's tremendous passion and talent and wisdom. And a lot of conversations, like Chris was saying, it, it was very grassroots, really coming from the crowds and the time that we all had, like, you know, till you go around the room, say hi, if you want to, what brought you there, share your favorite color, whatever the topic that ice picker was that week, we would always feel this gap, like, oof, there's still so much that was untouched. And so I really think it was that combination that 
drew drew us and you know several several people to say you know what like let's actually do something about it and um the the beauty in that was that people that may not have we could talk about this perhaps soon but that may not have had the space or thought that they were in a position to share um were able to step up and have a much more um empowered conversation and uh, there was a sense of um equality in the room and, and that kind of then spearheads into the conversation with no no people um outside of just people who stutter that were present so i'll pause there to see if anyone wants to add awesome yeah i think that's i mean you know that sounds like it was you know it was a really great um you know, it was a really great conference and everything and you know um and i mean the process that you guys you know had to start it to you know, really, uh, really just your passion for, you know, uh, seeing a need in the, in the starting community and, you know, saying, you know, we're going to do something about this. We're going to start, uh, we're going to start this conference. I think, you know, I think that's an, that's amazing, you know, just having that passion and the initiative, you know, to start something that's, you know, that's always great. And, you know, I think, um, you know, this is always an area where um, in, the, in the starting community, it's always really helpful to have on um, these conferences like this where, you know, people can really come together, um, you know, as a community. Um, you know, for me personally, I always, I always think that's really helpful. So, um, you know, it's great that you guys uh, were able to put this together. Um, so, uh, so can you uh, maybe now, you know, kind of talk about, um, you know, some of the events or um, the work that, or the workshops maybe, um, you know, at the conference, like you know, some of the events that were held during the conference. Um, you know, um, you know, any any different topics? I know. You know, Chris, you mentioned briefly on like interview prep or, um, you know, on like icebreaker games, um, you know, can you kind of just, um, you know, kind of give an overview on, on sort of the different topics at the conference? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, uh, we had, we've had three conferences um, to date and uh, we had um, we, we had a three years running starting in 2016. Um, and then our last one was in 2018. Um, and uh, kind of over that time, um, I think we kind of refined our approach a bit um, over the years. And, uh, um, you know, we, we all got to know each other better. There was um, I kind of forget how exactly how many of us there are, maybe 12 or, or, or 15 um, people that were part of the plan, the, the, the planning committee by, by 2018. Um, and, you know, we, we all had spent a lot of time w w with each other and we kind of got a sense of what, like, um, like what eat, like what each individual's kind of brand is. Um, and I think that sort of, uh, we kind of had like um, we kind of empowered each other and encouraged each other to 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 run with with what kind of lights us up. Um, and um, I remember one of the topics that that I spoke on um, I think in 2018 uh, was on on the power of stuttering um, and and vulnerability. And what vulner like the power inherent in in making yourself vulnerable when communicating, um, you know, and just kind of uh, like a little descript like a little description of that is just you know we kind of um, maybe it, maybe in this culture maybe just as human beings uh, it's uncomfortable um, to, uh, to to be vulnerable uh, and. You know, we want communication generally to be kind of as as smooth as we can make it, and um, you know, we don't want to show uh, we don't want to show weakness when we communicate. And you know, for people who stutter, like myself, um, I don't really have a choice in that. You know, and so. Um, so kind of what I always, what I've kind of come to realize for me is that the best option is to embrace um, that I'm going to be out there stuttering and that, you know, 
certain days it's going to be it's going to be really it's going to be really wicked and i'm going to be you know um you know you know really kind of um you know struggling with it and uh how can i kind of how can i make that sort of work for me um you know what like what benefit like what positive can come from that and um and uh Christopher Constantino and myself kind of put together a workshop on um, how to how to make how to make uh, stuttering kind of work for us and 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 that vulnerability and the power that that can have on um, kind of revealing a lot about yourself to 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 to, to the to, to to the listener um, and kind of encouraging the 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 the, the listener or your um, conversational partner to share more about themselves um, because you've already taken the first step of kind of revealing a lot of what um, a lot of what you have going on. Um, so kind of that was sort of the nature of it, but it was, I, I think that we, that we kind of like, we all kind of had different sort of pet projects and like interests that like particularly appealed to us as individuals. And I also think that um, our conferences, I mean, like Chris has said, has really evolved um, over the past few years. I think our first year, um, you know, we were really passionate about it. We almost came in with a bit of an angsty attitude. Like um, we, like one of the workshops I did with um, Gabriel Shaken was how it feels to be pathologized, um, which we felt like was a question that we had never really discussed. And there was also that really great keynote speech by Barry Yeoman. Um, that's still up on you um, for everyone. And also, um, so the the conference afterwards, um, we regrouped, and we decided that we wanted to focus more on reflecting, um, to focus more internally. So we did um, topics like the stuttering moment, um, where we talked about like feelings in a block. We talked about what these blocks mean for us. Um, these blocks that seem so silent, but there's so much more in there. And these moments um, and how raw they are. And then the, um, the third conference we did, um, we took everything and we kind of combined it. And um, our, our main focus for that conference was truly about community community. Um, so we had like great workshops that focus on the social model of disability when thinking about stuttering. Um, for me, I did a um, intersectionality panel um, with stuttering where we focused um, our panel on voices that aren't, aren't heard as much in the community. So like black voices, queer voices. Um, and so I guess like we, like as a group, I do feel like there's there's been a big evolution of the thought. Um, and I think that that really says a lot about our community and just how much we've grown in it. Yeah, and, and I'll add that it's it's like each year built off of the uh, uh, other. And the beautiful thing was, is that um, it's like when we slowed down to listen what the needs were, we were then able to see what's the next level or what's the next layer that we need to go into. And it, 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 explore. And um, I think the irony right now is that we left off with the last conference being about community and now we have COVID 
um, and the physical part of it hasn't been able to come together uh, like we have for now three years. So um, Zoom is, is nice, it's just not the same for being real. Awesome, I think that's great that, um, you know, uh, all the progress that you were describing and you know, like you were saying, you know, every year has kind of built upon the last year and really, really sounds like there's a lot of momentum, um, you know, going on in the community, you know, even, even with COVID, you know, obviously it's, it's not the same, you know, being virtual, but, you know, still having, you know, still having that community present and, you know, that solid base, I think, I think is awesome. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's great to hear from all of you, you know, talking about, um, right, some of the events you set up and, um, you know, kind of the interest that was, you know, that was present from the community that, you know, the uh, community right, really wanted to see, um, um, right, uh, all these different topics, you know, right, to talk about that sometimes, you know, aren't, aren't necessarily present. Um, you know, so I think it's great that you guys um, found that need and, right, you're listening to the community and, and really, you know, we're able to build uh, such a great conference, um, you know, they're really, uh, that really brought the community together. Um, you know, so I think, um, right, that's uh, that's great progress that uh, you guys have made over these last three years. Um, so uh, one follow-up question I wanted to ask um, for Haya. So I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I know, um, right, the, uh, you mentioned this conference was um, just for people who, uh, uh, just for people who stutter, right? Um, so as yourself, you know, being both a person who stutters and and also an SLP, um, can you kind of, you know, talk about like that process where um, you kind of had, had uh, you kind of had like both viewpoints, um, you know, so kind of attending the conference as a person who starts, you know, with an SLP background. Of course, yeah. And like you said, this was a space just for people who stutter. And so it was very, very important to keep it that way. Um, the thing about me becoming a speech therapist is that is that I'm a person who stutters first. Um, my search and my journey to become a speech therapist was because of the disappointment that I felt this depth of despair really and felt let down by the by the help that I got. And so um, stepping into person who stutters is actually the, that, that role is um, the one that I most strongly identify with. Speech therapy happens to be an outcome of my seeking and my journey. And so, Huh, when I'm in that room, it's it's um, all good stutter vibes, and um, uh, it's really becoming one with everyone else who is a person who stutters there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. And um, yeah, I think right the community is so important, like you said. So it's it's great that you guys have you know, really really helped to build that community. Um, can, can, can I just can I just underscore that I, I love um, I, I love what Haya just said uh, with the um, uh, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth Haya but 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 the idea of like um, you, you kind of identify with uh, with being a person who stutters kind of first like maybe before your profession per se or or other um, other hats that 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 that, that, that we wear and. Um, and I would say that that, that, um, that really makes sense to me. Um, I would say that I, um, of my various kind of roles and the, the things that I do, um, being a person who stutters is, I think, is the role that's truest uh, to, to me. And um, it kind of speaks to why it was so important to, um, to move beyond being a covert, a person, a covert stutterer, um, because, you know, there was so much honesty that I was kind of keeping from the world. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, it kind of you know, goes back to uh, Springs Point, right, um, earlier tonight, where, you know, stuttering, it, it can really impact you know, every part of our life, um, you know, in a good way. But, you know, it's so much more than just speech, right? It, it really, you know, really impacts, you know, so much of our life that, you know, it becomes a part of us and that can be a, you know, that can be a really great thing. Um, that's, that's, um, yes, it's great to hear um, from all of you and your successes um, with this. So um, the last question 
I had about the conference. Um, and I think, I, I think you know, all three of you have kind of have kind of touched on this already. But can you kind of you know, talk about how how the conference has helped with your own uh, with your own you know, personal growth with stuttering and kind of you know has helped you along that stuttering journey? You know, now being leaders, um, right, uh, for these conferences, being leaders in the community. Um, can you kind of touch on you know how that is has really helped your growth? Bring it up. I saw you. I saw you unmute yourself. You did it. Okay. Do you, do you want me to go? Okay. Good. Um, all right. Yeah. I. I. I was. I would say that. Um, um, I think there's probably like a lot of connection in, in what we have to say, but uh, 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 it would have been. It. It's. I think it's pretty hard to be a person who stutters in this world, um, and. Uh, doing it alone, I think, is um, at, you know, I, is really hard. Um, and with w w with the NSA groups, where where it started, with kind of with developing relationships with all the people in those rooms, um, it gave me a real kind of comfort to know that uh, that I wasn't alone, um, and that I had. Um, I had friends in the community that 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 were li that were living dignified, um, kind of proud lives um, as people who stutter, and I could kind of admire them and sort of emulate them and kind of um, uh, kind of resort to 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 their strength and and kind of when I was kind of having a really hard time, I could, you know, can, kind of check in with them and w w w w whether they've had similar struggles and how they got through it. And, and I guess, you know, NYC Stutters was kind of, um, it was kind of crystallizing some of those relationships um, just in that, like, and we, we were, we were kind of really committed to, um, to, 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 to living uh, living kind of proudly as people who stutter and wanting to kind of um, kind of encourage other people who stutter to, 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 to do the same, but really kind of strengthening and kind of crystallizing those relationships that, that, that we had formed earlier in the NSA groups. Um, yeah, for me, just go, go, going off on what Chris um, talked about just the pure aspect of com community. I think that that has probably been the most important thing. I think being able to categorize yourself in this group um, for me has been really important. It's really um, taught me to think more critically about stuttering, about the way I to think about my own speech. Um, it's made me really analyze um, the experiences I've had and the effects it's had on the way I think about myself. Um, I just think being around all these people who share the same thing but are so different, um, being able to add representation to this fun thing that's felt so lonely. I think that um, has been so special for me. Um, I now love talking about stuttering um, and it's when I'm able to like really talk about it in a group and we're able to bounce off these I, I ideas about our speech um, and when we're able to just talk about it um, and without what, without shame, um, just being able to share these things, I think, um, is probably the most important thing for me in my own stuttering journey and feeling more okay with my own speech. 
Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to add to, again, what Spring and, and Chris said, the sense of pride has grown exponentially. Um, there's something about having to travel a journey on your own. And even if you're doing okay um, and you're making your way through, there's nothing like it if you're in a large car with, with, with others who are headed in the same uh, 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 direction and, and are going through it at the same time. Um, and so really shifting again from that shame to pride, having the community helped um, tremendously. And, um, you know, we all have different families that we come from in terms of getting stuttering, but there's often that feeling that no matter how much someone who loves you dearly is there for you with your stutter, unless they know what it's like firsthand, there's, there's a sense of loss that they don't fully get it. And so I know that for me, it was the first place that felt like home with regard to stuttering, where here I was finally with a group of others who didn't even have to be more uh, 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 advanced, but it was just like, you get it, you feel it, you lived it, you breathed it. Um, and that has created more safety and from there more courage and from there more pride. And and that's really taken me the furthest. Like I, as we were talking, I, I was like smiling from, ear to ear because I don't think I even have realized up until this point just what a powerful experience it has been being involved now in the community aspect um, of stuttering and, and so th th there really are no words but what I what I do know is that we we have more and more research to show that the value of um, connection and support and um, the right connections and the right support so that's what this has really done for me. And that's how it's helped me grow. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing that um, for all of you. It's, you know, it's really great to hear about your successes um, with the conference and, you know, and how much we've been able to build a community. Like Greg was saying, um, you know, the community is so important, um, you know, um, just to have, you know, people who have, who have the similar experiences and you know, have people you can learn from, you know, and be friends with, um, that's so important. So, um, all right, so congrats again on all your success um, with the conference and, and, and thanks again, you know, for sharing, um, for sharing all of this with us. Um, so I wanna talk now about, you know, kind of uh, stuttering, um, right, so outside of the, of the conference kind of. So, you know, I have, um, two questions here that I think are kind of related, um, you know, to the topic of, you know, building awareness or, you know, building advocacy for people who stutter. So, um, you know, with um, right now, right, um, stuttering, you know, is in the news, you know, a fair amount, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe more so in the past, um, right. And I know, um, you know, something that the NYC stutters group had already written an article on, um, right, um, earlier this year, I think, was how um, the current on the current, or the current, I guess, narrative um, in the media about how some people are portraying, are portraying stuttering as, you know, something to overcome, um, right? Some famous people who stutter, you know, um, and talking about, um, right, the topic of like overcoming your stutter. And I know this was an article that the MIC Stutters Group had written um, in February, I believe, of this year. So can you kind of talk about, right, I guess like the current narrative right now of stuttering in the media and kind of, you know, if that's good narrative or, or just a narrative, you know, we should change. Um, and also, you know, ways that people who stutter, you know, can, uh, can start to build awareness for themselves, you know, and advocate for themselves. Zach, you probably have to put one of us on the spot. I did not author the um, the article, and so I fully supported it when, when it went out, but I can't speak strongly to it. But when I read it, I nodded my head strongly. Yeah. I was I was smiling because uh, because this reminds me of uh, of of the NSA groups where where we become kind of become kind of experts at um, a question being posed and then people just kind of 
sort of respectfully kind of looking at each other, sort of not wanting to to to, to kind of step on someone else's thought, <laughs> just kind of like it's just kind of sitting back. And and I really uh, it's something that I think like before the NSA I would have probably been like crawling in my skin, but like but 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 w w with my experience now, I kind of I delight in those moments. Um, I, I can uh, I can speak a little bit about the. Uh, about the 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 the, the, the narrative and the in the media now and um, and uh, in our response letter to um, to uh, I think it was um, uh, what was it something in uh, February where uh, uh, a politician had um, had had uh, had had made fun of um, Joe Biden for stuttering. And, um, and uh, then there, and then there was an op-ed uh, written by um, uh, Captain Sully, uh, the, the guy who, the guy who landed the, the plane on the Hudson River. Um, and he's a person who stutters. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, he basically is, you know, um, Actually, I think I'm losing my train of thought on how exactly he, he kind of framed it. Spring, do you mind to kind of correct or setting me straight here? Yeah, so a lot of the narrative um, around stuttering currently in the media, including the piece that Captain Philly wrote, um, is this big emphasis around stuttering in the childhood. Um, it really paints this very vivid imagery of bullying, um, the whole knocking. Um, and then for us, for us as adults who still stutter, um, for me at least, I stutter a lot. Um, it really perpetuates this really deep, dark fear um, that we will always stand out. We will always be seen as um, somewhat incapable until we're fluent um, because there's so much emphasis on um, all this trauma that we accumulate as a kid. And there's this big emphasis on you have to uh, overcome it in order to be a functional member of society. So for us, um, we really focus that um, essay on this idea that stuttering is okay, um, even as adults, and that maybe, just maybe, um, for once, it can be because we stutter, not in spite of our stuttering. Um, and this idea that it's really okay just the way we speak, um, whereas a lot of the narrative in the media um, is still completely based on fluency. It's still based on laughing, um, that like really over knocking when for a lot of us, um, a, for a lot of us, the shame we feel um, really actually stems from like microaggressions and this very internalized this really deeply like internalized fear of of our speech um, being broken. Like every time someone interrupts me, but like even now, like um, I find that wearing a face mask and ordering food, um, that's been impossible. And it's kind of this thing that, um, that we as adults who stutter have to face is these constant messages everywhere that reinforce this idea that you know your speech isn't okay there's something wrong with your speech um that you need to be fluent so if there's anything else you want to add chris please do now yeah um well yeah well what um kind of what I find to be like the, the real issue with um, uh, with the, with the message that the goal is to overcome our stuttering 
is that it kind of like, I feel like it sets uh, people who stutter up to be kind of competitive with each other. Um, like who's, who's, who has overcome it more, who's, over, who, who's overcome it less. Um, and like, how do you, how do you measure that? And like, I don't want to be in that game. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to play that game where I've overcome it more or less than another person who stutters. I just want to be a person who stutters. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to lose that, you know? Um, and I think that the overcome narrative kind of, kind of places you in that arena where, where the idea is like, you always have to be working to something like get rid of it whatever they're they're that they're, they're measuring like i don't need my speech measured you know i'm i'm i, I speak the way i do it's, it's it's good oh yeah that's great yeah i absolutely agree with everything uh, you know with everything you guys said and yeah, i didn't mean to put anyone on the spot there um but yeah i agree you know the whole the whole narrative that you know stuttering is something to overcome is just you know it, it's just it's just wrong right it's just plain wrong like stuttering is nothing nothing to overcome there's nothing wrong with stuttering and um you know i think it, you know at least for me you know uh, before you know it, it it wasn't stuttering but it was my attitude about stuttering you know that was holding me back and you know that took me a long time to realize so you know if anything i think it's it's overcoming your attitude about stuttering if you're you know if you're if it's something you're worried about so yeah i agree with you you know that's, you know sometimes in the news where um you know that's kind of the current narrative about overcoming stuttering i think you know it's just it's just plain wrong because it it's kind of saying you know that that stuttering is something you need to overcome which is not true at all um and zach i i wanted to add something but i wouldn't yep. i weren't sure if you were done yeah yeah i'm done yeah Overcome has become synonymous with fluency, um, right? And like, when have we ever heard that, like that I'm no longer like say, quote unquote overcome, which by itself is, is very um, capitalistic and, and also showing that that thing is wrong, therefore must be suppressed or done away with. But let's just say, if we were to use a word or a synonym that wasn't as, you know, black and white, what about like, whew, it no longer makes the decisions for me, like the fear or the attitude. I, I'm no longer sitting shamed by this. And so, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to add that to your point. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. I think that's, you know, so important for, you know, maybe, you know, people who don't stutter, who, you know, are kind of having this narrative um, in the media sometimes, you know, just to make sure that, you know, they're really, uh, making that distinction. So, you know, they're really, you know, clarifying that there's nothing wrong with stuttering. That's nothing to overcome. Um, yeah, so I'm glad, I'm glad you guys, you know, shared your thoughts and I think that's really important. Um, you know, so I think that was great to hear uh, from everyone on that. Um, so the last question I had was, um, you know, if you had um, any advice, right, for someone who is either, either looking, you know, to get started uh, in the stuttering community. So maybe, you know, someone who, you know, has just been reading articles or listening to podcasts and now they're looking to, you know, start uh, start attending uh, meetings like this or, you know, once things open up, you know, um, right, conferences in person or on the other side, you know, people who are looking to um, start uh, start to lead an initiative in the stuttering community, right, like the NMIC Stutters Conference. So, you know, leading some sort of, of program or initiative. So if you have, um, you know, any advice for uh, someone uh, someone like in either of those positions. Um, I just I just wanted to add um, to to the last to, to the last topic, um, real quick, which is um, that that uh, that that the stuttering is is in the news more, and um, regardless of the way that 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 that, that the news is covering it. Um, I think it's a positive for people who stutter. Um, I think when I was growing up, you know, it was maddening, you know, that 
for me, stuttering had such a huge effect on my life and like the way that I looked at the world. And I felt like I was, I felt like it was invisible to other people. Um, not, 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 not invisible when I stuttered, but just that like nobody could talk about it. No one wanted to talk about it, even thought about it. It seemed like, um, and, you know, regardless of whether the media is kind of covering it in a way that, that we think is kind of, um, appropriate or, or really embracing it for what, for, 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 for the power that's contained in stuttering. Um, it is just kind of being talked about. And that's an opportunity for all of us, um, for, for all those people who stutter to kind of, to kind of work, or work different slants off of that. Um, and um, so this is, this is a good, this is a good time for people who stutter. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, that's a great point, Chris. And yeah, thanks for bringing that up again. I think, I think you're exactly right. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you know, something that's being talked about now. And, um, you know, that's, I think it's a good thing. And, um, you know, I think it's a good opportunity for all of us now to help to shape that narrative then, um, you know, I mean, now that, you know, it's, it's, you know, kind of a hot topic right now, we can help to shape that narrative. Um, so I think that's a great point that you bring up. Zach, I'll, I'll get back to the question then that you asked, um, what piece of advice would you give someone um, that check in with yourself um, if you feel that you have the passion and the commitment that is necessary to make something like this happen? It does. It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. Um, there are roadblocks that you hit. There are times that you feel like, oh my gosh, this is really tough, but nothing that can't be... Um, handled and so um, that brings me to my next point um, even if you don't have an, a purely clear roadmap of where you're going to go if you have the passion and the commitment you're going to go there so don't stop because you're not fully sure what that looks like Um, so I, I just think just being out there, I think just showing up is really important. Um, there's a lot of these support groups out there. Um, and there are people who are very passionate about this. There are people who are very interested in this. Um, and I think especially relating back to what we were just talking about, the stuttering is in the media. Um, for the first time. And I think people are really talking about it um, and people are really being more crit crit critical about it. Um, and I think for me, um, for me, what's been really important is just my own stuttering journey. I think um, we all will, we, we're all, we're all on our own journeys with this. And I think for me, what's been the most important is having these internal monologues about my own speech, um, really exploring it and really um, thinking about the way I feel about my speech. I think um, despite it being like a larger community, I think stuttering is basically all the self work. Um, you know, we live in affluent the world and I think it's always important for us to constantly check in on ourselves and constantly check in with each other um, and being able to really feel secure in your own um, in, in your self um, in order to be able to give yourself to a community is very important um, yeah uh I guess I want to say a little bit more about um, kind of advocating, um, you know, as people who stutter, uh, with, with this with this being kind of a very um, a very powerful moment for us. Um, you know, I, I think that there's so many different. This is one of our sort of one of our kind of main topics for NYC stutters is like there's different arms um, of the work that we're doing, and 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 advocacy is a very important part of it, and. You know, part of advocacy is like, um, you know, is 
in in terms of the law, um, in terms of in terms of media and conferences and things like that. Um, but 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 with the law, you know, um, it's kind of it's a, it's a tricky thing. Uh, the, the the law is very powerful, but with people who stutter, you know. Because we've been so um, convinced that that the best way for us to, to handle it is to kind of sweep it under the rug, um, don't make a lot of noise about it. Um, we haven't really um, kind of challenged our employers for discrimination and things like that. Because I mean, for many of us, we kind of um, have have been kind of convinced that you know it, that we didn't have a right to do that, um, and it's it's becoming. I feel like the more that we talk about stutter and the more people acknowledge that it's a real thing, um, we need to start like, like bringing it into the courts. Um, I'm a disability, a disability rights attorney. And, you know, we, we, we have all kinds of um, disability rights cases for people with physical disabilities, people who, who are deaf other things. Um, but my organization, for example, we don't have any cases for people who stutter. And I, and I believe that's just because we don't, as people who stutter, we almost don't think that we, that we, I don't know if I want to say deserving of it, but we're like, we don't think that it's like appropriate um, to, to seek that kind of, that kind of help. And it is. And I think that, um, I think that, that, that we will start making strides as people who stutter, the more that we use kind of every tool uh, available to us. So. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. I think that's a very important topic. Um, you know, so I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. You know, that the topic, you know, of you know, disability rights, you know, goes hand in hand with advocating, right? Goes hand in hand with advocating for ourselves. So you know, I think. That's a uh, you know that's that's definitely a very important issue that you know unfortunately it probably still is prevalent. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that you um, brought up that topic because it is you know something I think that the community um, you know it is an issue that you know faces the community sometimes. Um, and so thanks for bringing that up, um, and you know, thanks again uh, to all three of you right uh, for sharing uh, sharing you know your uh, your experiences and your journey with the. Uh, with stuttering and with the MIC Stutters Conference, um, you know, this is a great, uh, great discussion. Yeah, um, you know, it's great to hear about um, the conference and all of your success and and everything you're doing for the community. So thanks again um, for sharing that uh, with all of us. Um, so at this time now, we can open it up um, for audience Q and A. So um, feel free for anyone, um, or you can just ask a question, or if you prefer, you can uh, ask a question in the chat on Zoom. Um, you know, so feel free to do either one. Um, yeah, at this time we'll open it up. So feel free to ask away. I guess I'll ask. Um, are there plans to have a fourth conference on Zoom? Because um, I mean, you know, uh, using breakout rooms, etc. You know, I. I'm part of a conference that's very successful for 150 people on uh, Zoom. And um, I would love to see it. So are there plans? We don't, we don't have plans uh, right now. Um, there's been some kind of we've had some rumblings of kind of what of what maybe our next um, kind of our next step is or what we're going to do next. Um, but at this point, uh, we we haven't we haven't done any work um, toward getting a Zoom conference together yet. I mean, I would love to see a conference dealing with the shame and and the silence because I think that the, I mean that is. That, that's the real issue. If someone has a great life, they're speaking up. If someone doesn't have a great life, chances are they're silent. Um, I, I, I would love to see a fourth conference dealing with shame. Uh, Brene Brown's 
TED Talk has had 44 million views. I think if we had a conference that dealt with shame and silence and the self-blame, I mean, that's why I think it's not in the courts of that. I, you know, I blamed myself for stuttering. Um, I, I think because of COVID and the fact that everyone's on Zoom, I think we could get amazing attendance to a conference like that and I really move things forward. Thank you. Um, I, I think you're right. There's there is the real opportunity uh, with us being remote um, to really kind of reach reach larger numbers of people. So, 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 so thank you for for, for for bringing that up. And one last comment. Um, society, you know, shame's a huge part of stuttering. I mean. For years ago, any dummy can say their name, why can't I? Um, shame is, I don't know, par, probably part of the engine about our motivation, about stuttering and whatever we do. Um, and society cannot make you feel shame. Like it's a very personal, you know, it's personal. Um, Phil, Phil Schneider in his first video Transcending stuttering said stuttering is only repeating a word. Everything else is what is brought to it. And um, you know, those type of messages can re would really be, I think it'd be, be, be so beneficial for people in moving the um, conversation uh, forward if a con you know, if a conference online dealt with that. And I'm willing to help out with it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, if there are no more um, questions, um, we can wrap up then. Um, but thanks again for joining us. Um, you know, it's great to hear everything. Um, um, Katie, I can hand it off to you if, if, if you want to close. May I just say one more thing, which is um, uh, just um, kind of piggybacking on on kind of the last uh, the last question um, is. Uh, you know, we're, you know, we're a community that, that, uh, you know, uh, you know, it has to keep growing and, um, people have to, had to, had to be motivated, um, to, to, to take on, to take on the work. Uh, so, you know, I, I think, I think our hope, you know, and our dream is that other people will, will kind of, will see what, what, what we've done. Um, NYC stutters and, and and many other kinds of um, communities and kind of learn from our blueprint and um, and take it and run with it you know so that's that's really what 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 we're hoping for um, you know because because the moment is is right to do it. Uh, thank you so much for that Chris and and yeah this is. Thank you all so much. This is I just feel like my my gears are turning just listening to these conversations. Um, and and yeah, this is this is such an interesting time um, where we are 
physically separate right now, but yet there's so much energy and opportunity for stuttering. Um, and that is kind of why we put this series together is exactly what you just said, Chris, is we, you know, we want to sort of share these stories of, you know, here's how we built this for stuttering. And there's opportunity and energy right now. It's a very special moment. And, you know, we want to collect who those voices are and, and how we connect. You know, it used to be with those of us who live close by would get together and do stuff. And that's a different, we're in a different paradigm right now. Um, so thank you all to everyone for joining. Thank you again to our panelists. Um, thank you all to who, who joined and shared and asked questions um, and listened. Again, we will post this on YouTube afterwards. I will also um, send out an email with some summary. I've been writing down quotes all night um, and we'll also share the links as well that were mentioned today. Um, the YouTube video to Barry's keynote and the Medium article. And yes, if there are links, um, I think there's, yeah, I'll send the link to the NYC Setters Facebook page as well. Um, our next event is in two Sundays with, uh, speaking of, you know, taking energy and making something new, um, Tom Sharstein and Marvin Wiley from the World Stuttering Network, which is a brand new stuttering initiative, but they've been very active on social media, featuring conversations with folks all around the world. Um, so this week we talked about a very local stuttering impact initiative, and then uh, our next one is a global stuttering network initiative. Um, so join in in two weeks, and again, I'll have links and all that available online. You can go on our uh, Shared Voices event, Bright. That event is already up there. Um, so thank you all to everyone. Um, thank you, Spring, Haya, and Chris. And uh, keep the ideas flowing and keep the conversations going, and we will see you at the next one. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Au revoir. And I will stop the recording.